Hello world and welcome back, I'm Karhu the Great Bear of the North and this is Wild True Learn, a game where you take the role of a machine learning programmer and you try to make machines learn and you try to make a bunch of money at the same time. Um, so yeah, this is the basic uh, mission accept screen. Now we have the different jobs, uh, we can get cash from like relatives and whatever, we can just create our own startup companies. But right now we only have $200 and we're basically going through the tutorial at the beginning. And good morning! We are running a big school survey in schools and we've encountered a problem. Pupils often forget to mark in which grade they are in in questionnaires, that's a lot of ins. Can you divide pupils from junior and high school using their test sheets? Yes, we can totally do this. And this game will actually give you a little bit of a history about machine learning as well. So for example, mankind has always been trying to create an artificial intelligence. Before the invention of neural networks, people used expert systems. Expert systems is a determined algorithm which reproduces decisions of a real person in some cases. One of the best examples of this is Eliza, the first chat box in the world. It was created in 1966 and talked with the patient using questions similar to real psychotherapists. It worked horribly. So this is this this is the, your programming screen. On the left hand side, you got the you have the input in this case ten red and ten blue, and on the right you have the output, right? And in this case we need all the reds up here. We need to get eight reds with one hundred percent accuracy, so we can't accidentally put blues in here, and we need to get eight blues with one hundred percent accuracy down here. And on the right side of the screen, right above my head, is a list of the nodes that we can use. This is kind of like algorithm. Uh, in, in, in a decision flowchart, each time where a decision can be made is called a node, right? So, for example, this node, expert system, this node compares colors. If the color of the element is equal to the chosen color, the element comes out of the top socket, uh, this one. Otherwise, it goes into the bottom of the socket. And in the real world, if color help hissed, no text. I think they still haven't just updated that. That's okay, it's still very much in alpha. So if it is red, we're going to put it up here. Otherwise, which means if it's blue, we're going to send it down here, right? And look at this. Test run. Boo! Boo! Look at that. There we go. It's kind of slow. This decision takes one full second. We can eventually drop this down to 0 0.048 seconds. But for now, this is exactly what we need. There we go. Let's speed that up. Fantastic. Test run complete. So we're going to release this to our... To our clients and it does cost a little bit of money for servers to launch this but that is okay we will make more money than the server load anyways next project fantastic all right so that's basically how it goes but obviously as things develop it gets a lot more complicated now hello we have some errors in our questionnaires data we can't solve the problem can you fix it probably so we need red or green red or green but we don't want blue so let's get our the input if it is red Actually, what we want to do is we want to sort out blue. So if it is blue, junk it. If it is red or green, we send it over there. I'm going to release this because I know this will work. Boom. See, the blue is getting shifted into the trash can. Everything else is going across. Easy peasy, right? This is still kind of the tutorial. But yeah, Cat Cash Bank is our bank. And there's a cat that does something, I guess. Now, errors in the database number two. Hello, it's us again. We found some new types of errors made by our users. Please update your program. It will be easier if you it will be easier if you will use the previous version of the code. So we're gonna accept the job. And here's the thing: you can create your own nodes, but you can also use nodes you've already developed, right? Now you can use programs which you've constructed while completing your previous tasks. Here you can see all the schemes made of basic nodes recursively, which are allowed to be used in this task. So if in your task you're only allowed to use expert nodes and trash cans, then these custom nodes, the only custom nodes that will be listed are the ones that were, that use expert nodes and trash cans, but nothing else, right? So if you don't have access to, I don't know, a shape sorter, a machine learning, learning algorithm, then you can't use it in these. And the custom nodes don't waste time on transferring data from one node to another, so they're actually faster. Right. And anytime you can get back to the previous tasks and rewrite the programs, for example, you may optimize them for, for using the current program. So right now, we um, this is without blue is going to get rid of all the blues. So the ones that will be let through are the red and the green. But we don't want any green. So we're then going to filter that through the expert system. The red will go there. And anything else will go here. Granted, we could just push it through here first. But they want us to know how to use custom nodes. Even though just filtering through the 
expert system is the best way to go about doing that. Come on, come on. There we go. And we'll just release that. Yes, it will cost us $2 a second to launch because servers are expensive in the 1960s. There we go. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. It slowly starts to fill up. And there we go. Next project. Optimization of the code. Hey, it's, it's, it's us again. We hope it's our last request for you. So do I. We've changed our database system. Can you update your code one last time? It must work faster. Thanks. So here's the thing. Before we had the expert system, which is slow, it takes one full second for each unit of data that gets pushed through this, right? Now, a decision tree color, right? This will happen in 0.3 seconds, but there is a downside to this. The expert system only sends out what you want. Everything else gets junked. This one will send out, basically, how it works is, let's say your red goes through here. It says, oh, I'm a red, I'm gonna go this way. And then it will go out to whatever's attached to this node. And then blue will say, oh, I'm a blue. And then it will go out this way. But green says, I'm not a red, I'm not a blue. So we'll just randomly decide which way you go. So if you want to do your machine, your automatic sorting, you need to do it like this. You need to do it like uh, blue and green, right? This way. All the reds will go through here. They'll say, oh, I'm a red, and then it'll go into that. All the blues will go through here, and it'll again say blue, and it'll go to that. But some of the greens will pass by up this way, and some of the greens will pass this way. So then the second one will sort through red and green. But there will be no blues in this particular node, because all the blues already got shunted off this way. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. Let's release this. I know this will work. Boom, look at that. There we go, all the reds are going through, everything else is getting shunted off in either the first or the second node. It's good. Task four, Illuminati origins. Good day. I study ancient manuscripts and books in order to find the very beginning and truth about Illuminati secret society. We need to find all triangle figures in these documents to solve the puzzle. Can we do it using a program? Sure, I'm sure we can. And this is essentially the same thing as the color manipulation, but it is using shapes. And spe specifically, this uses the Scale Invariant Feature Transform. It is one of the most powerful non-neural image recognition algorithms. SIFT is very fast and may find simple objects and patterns. Simple objects being circles, squares, and triangles, right? So we're going to sift through here. We want only triangles. Come on. Only triangles. Boom. Everything else gets jumped. Release this. I know this will work. Let's go. Come on. It takes 1.25 seconds, which is actually slower than recognizing colors but hey but hey this is the first thing we've got that can actually recognize shapes look at it go look at it go there we go two 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 more triangles send them across nice everything is complete the alphabet recognition system now good morning tovarish we know that someone from the usa creates a system which can recognize cyrillic alphabet you must create a copy of that system for kgb the handwriting of usa spies is awful just like my Russian accent, which started off sort of Russian and then ended up not at all Russian. But anyways, we're going to accept this job. And this is based on Rosenblatt's perceptron. Now, the first perceptron, the machine neuron, was invented by Frank Rosenblatt in 1957. So this is the first thing that was capable of learning. Now, Frank created Mark I in 1960. And the Mark I is a perceptron machine, which can recognize English letters by their shapes. Just like many kids start when they're first learning to read. Now, here's the thing. We put the input into here. And this Mark I Perceptron, it, it has three outputs, circle, square, and triangle. But it's not gonna get them all right. But as things go on, here I'll show you what I mean. Like the first, the first square, oh, look at that. The square got shunted off to the triangle output. So it's gonna go in here. But it realized that it was wrong because we corrected it. And then, so the error rate is actually going to go down over time. It started off at 75%, but as it goes through, it gets actually progressively better at doing what it does. So this first test will probably fail just because the accuracy rates won't be high enough. Boom, actually the first test will, oh, the first test succeeded. Okay, 
but now the error rate is down to 20%, so we can release this. Yeah, don't show it next time. And this one will actually be pretty good. It only takes 0.7 seconds. A lot faster than than the uh, than the sift. A lot faster than the sift, which is fantastic. There we go. Now text recognition. We are aware that you were able to create a system to a, create a text recognition system based on the Rosenblatt perceptron. We need a similar system. You must teach it to distinguish vowels from consonants. This task is simpler, but more accuracy is required. Right? The triangles can go either way. Either way. We need circles up here and squares down there. But you actually need 18 units to go into this section and 30 units to go into this section. So I'm going to send all my circles down there and all my squares and all my triangles to go down there. Hopefully this will work. Let's see. And whenever you're using um, a machine learning algorithm or node like the Perceptron or some of the later advanced ones, it's definitely worth it to test it first because that will actually increase the the um, the accuracy of your of your program. There we go. Yep, failed is uh, we failed because the time was over, but we're going to test it again with the new error detection. It's plus to seventy five. It's not only 20, 21, 22, 23 percent, which is pretty good. And hopefully this will this will succeed this time. Yes, this one is a success with plenty of time left over. So let's release this. Fantastic. Look at him go. Look at him go. Pew, 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 pew. All right, and these, these initial tasks are pretty simple, pretty straightforward. But once you get a little bit more into it, things can get quite a bit um, hectic let's say and we can buy one megabyte of ram which increased sockets processing queue size by five one megabyte of ram one whole megabyte guys wow good afternoon we've already bought christmas trees for the holiday friends said that you can calculate when the peak demand for the goods will be help us please and here's a little bit of news report on uh, the darkest years of machine learning this is definitely the darkest timeline now, in 1969, Seymour Piper and Marvin Leminski wrote a book called Perceptrons. In this book, they talk about math constraints of the first perceptrons, the XOR problem. The SOR problem? The SOR? I don't know. XOR problem. This book has shifted the scientific interest in subsidies of the U.S. government organizations and slowed the machine learning process for almost 30 years. The expanded version of the book was released in 1987, containing the chapters that disproved the statements from the critical remarks made since 1969. There we go. So we want red, green, or blue to go up here, but we want only green to come down here. And there's going to be a lot of greens. So can we use a custom node? No, we have no custom nodes. So the decision tree. Decision tree is one of the basic machine learning algorithms. Each tree knows a limited number of classes. When the decision tree gains an element, it asks the element some questions and chooses the class most similar to the element. So we want green, to go down this way, and then red to go down this way. And we don't care if any blues go up this way. But we want to make sure that the only things that go down here are going to be green. Right, so this is how this is going to go. Comes here, if it's green, it'll get shunted down here, and if it's green, it gets shunted down here again. If it's red, it'll go immediately here. Perfect. So, but what about the blues? Some of the blues will go up here, in which case it's perfect anyways, but some of the blues will go down here, and then they'll get shifted back up here. This will work. It'll be really quick. Look at that. Boom. Boom. Super fast. Super duper fast. Uh, we do, in fact, it's so fast we've got time for like three more. Now, hello. We wrote you from the Science Center. Our current programs run very slow. Can you parallel that? Parallel that. Blah, 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 blah. Can you parallelize their calculations? Yeah, we can. And basically all this does is it takes the input and splits them into two streams. So one will go up here, second will go down there, the next one will go up here, next one will go down there, right? Boom. And it's just this simple. In this particular example, it wasn't really necessary, but once you start getting um, into different processes of different speeds, then parallelization actually really, really works. Hey, our parallelization system broke after the last Doors OS upgrade. Can you fix it? It was a very big system. Please be careful. So here we go. And look, so you can split it once, and then we will split it again you come down here you go across look at that uh, ah come on come on there we go there we go release i already know this is gonna work look at that look at that go fantastic 
We can also start our own startups, which I'll show you. I just want to do it one more. Uh, no, you know what? Let's go into startup. Hi, we're trying to launch a self-driving taxi service. It's a very, it's a very prospective startup, but we have a problem. Our algorithm makes a lot of errors when it tries to recognize traffic light signals. In result, the car sometimes moves when on stop signals, which is bad. That's very, very bad. That's how people die. We need you to solve this problem. The code must be working very fast. So what we want to do is, hmm, we don't have a color sort yet, but we want red, red lights and green lights. Every other shape, every other color doesn't really matter. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of the blues. Everything that is blue will get junked. That's going to happen first. And I know this is a fairly slow system, but um, actually here, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do it this way. We're going to do it this way. The decision tree. If it is, we're going to do the decision tree and then we're going to sort based on, on color because uh, the sift process is actually takes the longest, right? So we're going to do a color decision tree. The reds will go up here and then get sifted. The blues will go into the trash can. The greens will get split down here. And then the blues will go into the trash can. The greens will continue to go here and then get sifted based on shape. Right? So red will go up here. If it's a red circle, it goes up there. Otherwise, it gets junked. Green, go, green go, goes down here, does the same thing. And blues will get trashed. Let's test this. Is this is this fast? Are there going to be any bottlenecks? There don't appear to be any bottlenecks. Oh, yep, yeah, we're getting a bottleneck here. There's not really much we can do about that. There's not much we can do about that. Actually, there is. We can sort of fake a a. Uh, a parallelization process. All the reds will go through here, but then we're going to sort it based on whether or not it's green or blue. So 50% of them will go up here, 50% of them will go down here, I think. And then if they're not circles, they'll get shunted off through there. Let's see if this actually works. Will, will these get split? Yeah, they totally get split. Look at that. That's actually kind of fast. But it is slowing down our process, but we're not creating any bottlenecks. So there we go. I mean, it's not a true parallelization process, because parallelization, it sends it to the server with the least load. But uh, in this one, it will send it to a random server. So in this one, let's do another decision tree. And this one will sort for red or blue. There we go. There we go. There we go. And that will get junked. Let's see. Because the, 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 the lowest I got in my previous run, um, just to make sure everything worked, I've already played this game, uh, I got it down to about 21 seconds. And this is pretty good. I mean, it's not great, but we're not getting any bottlenecks. It's consistently low, at about 20, just under 26 seconds. This is not, it's not ideal, but this is pretty good. There's no bottlenecks, it will always process... Yeah, there we go. I like that. I like that, actually. Cool. No bottlenecks. We'll release that. Cool. And now we have our own business. We have our own business, which the more users we get, the the more money we'll make. It's fantastic. But don't... Just a word of advice. Um, you you can totally go bankrupt based on these companies. So make sure that you're, the startup is actually making money. Not all of them will make money. Not all of them will make money. So, hey. So good morning, it's Yahoo Corp. The president of our partner company has been dismissed last month. So there's an election running right now, and we need to know who will be the winner of that election to decide what to do with the relationship between our two companies. Now, do it and you'll receive a payment. That's usually how uh, jobs work. What we want to do is we want to sort into red. We only want to keep the reds. So the green and the blue, we need to get rid of. There we go. So we want... We're going to do it this way. We're going to split it. Boom. I don't even know if we need to split it. But uh, we're going to. So the reds will go up there. 
that red will go down there. And anything that green will go this way. Oh, no, no, no. Whoops. Um, yeah. Yep, sorry. We need to do it this way. Greens will get junked in this first stage. And then the second stage will junk the blues. There we go. Blue, go this way. Blue, go this way. Red. Red, this should work, I believe. It's very fast, actually. But we are getting a bottleneck here. We are definitely getting a bottleneck here. But it's complete. It's complete. It doesn't really matter about the bottleneck, so... Fine. If this was um, one of our startups, we would actually want to optimize it. But this, it's good enough for the client. Boom. There we go. Next project. And can we buy anything else? Hardware. Yeah, increases nodes work speed by 5%. A Gvidia 250. Um, let's do one more. An automatic movie rate. Oh, see, look, look, our startup made $243 last month. That's pretty good. And we can go back and rework it if we um, develop faster techniques later on. Hello, this message from the Osgurd Committee. We want to replace some of our experts with the help of a neural network. It probably explains why Shape of Water won Best Picture. Now, write a system which can rate the films by their type. Thank you. So we want red and green up here, and red and blue down here. Okay, that should be pretty simple. We want to get this done very, very quickly, so let's sort this here. And there's a lot of red. There's a lot of red. Um, a lot of green, so... Let's see, we want most of our reds to come down here, because this is the highest number of units that we need to get through here. So, red will automatically go through there. Um, we want green to automatically go up there. Um, yeah, we need to do this again. So we need green to go this way and blue to go down that way. So some of the reds will go up here, but all the blues will go down there. And then the reds will get shunted. Actually, no, the, the reds can get shunted off this way. Yeah. So green and reds will go up here. Blue and reds will go down this way. Green and blue. Green and reds will go this way. Blue and reds will go this way. This should do it. Oh, we are getting bottlenecks. We are getting bottlenecks, but this is good enough for the client anyways. That's fine. Fine by me. Look at that. Boom. That's nice. Nice. Fantastic. And can we get anything else from the store? No, we need task 13, which isn't going to be now because this is the end of this episode. I'm Carl the Great Bear of the North. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please like, please subscribe, comment, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter. Most importantly, support indie game developers like this one. I'll put the link in the description box below. But have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all next time in While True Learn. Bye, guys.